Okay, so as you can see, I have both a picture and booted on the Macintosh 2CX here. Um, quite a bit of troubleshooting went into this, so I didn't film that because it'd probably be that interesting, just me trying a bunch of different things. Um, video card is replaced. So I just went and got, I think this is the original video code that would have come with this machine. Um, I just uh, ordered one of those, put that in, and video works, so definitely there's nothing wrong with that other video card. Um, the floppy drive, there were actually two problems there. Um, one being the floppy drive was bad. This is a floppy drive I took out of a Macintosh uh, LC, and that works. But that wasn't the only problem. The other problem was apparently the disks that the PowerBook is writing aren't actually bootable for some reason. Um, when I tried, so I boot, powered up the LC, which I just got also, I ordered that for this project to uh, have some trial parts. Um, I got the LC, I tried to boot it up off a, the same disks that I was trying in here, and it wouldn't boot. Um, but when I booted it off the hard drive, which luckily still works in that one, um, it was able to, to boot up the hard drive and it was able to read the disks, but it just wouldn't boot from them. So I copied the disk images, same disk images from the PowerBook over to the LC, wrote the floppy on that, and then it tried it and then, then it was bootable. So I took that bootable floppy, put it in the floppy drive that was in here, still wouldn't boot. So I swapped the floppy drive over, and now, as you can see, we are booted. This um, this card should support color, I think. It's definitely a less fancy card than what was in it, but the one that was in it didn't work. So I uh, still haven't tried reading from the hard drive yet, but I suspect that's probably no good. Just got the proper drive kind of perched precariously there. I expect this to take this long. And this is a 144 megabyte uh, disk, by the way. I haven't tried the 720s. I got a comment on my last video saying that there is a difference in the hardware. Um, like the, the, I think it's something about like the um, mechanisms are different for the 720K versus the 144 double density versus high density. They're actually, it's the same drive. The same drive can read both. It's just the um, material the magnetic material on the disk is different. Yeah, this doesn't support color. Maybe you have to... Maybe you have to install it first before it will support color. Oh, here we go. You can do colors. So hey, there we go. That's better. There we go. Okay. Um, that's much better. Have a nice, colorful Apple logo now. Anyway, so I think what I'm going to do is see if I can transfer this floppy drive to the um, plastic support that goes in here, and then mount the hard drive back in and. Just see if um, we're able to read anything off the hard drive. I don't think we'll be able to. I think it's probably toasted. Um, another thing I can do is this is the bad floppy drive that was in there. Um, I could try cleaning the heads again. Um, I can't see anything obviously wrong with it. I and mean, you can look in there and see the capacitors are not the kind that leak. Actually, you can't because focus isn't working. So those are the kind of capacitors that usually don't leak. Um, I could take a closer look at them. I do see some tantalums in there, but usually tantalum capacitors just outright short. They don't usually go leaky like um, some of the electrolytics do. Usually when they short, then it just, you know, um, just completely stops working. But this drive is actually, you know, trying to spin up. It does spin up, it just is unable to read anything. So it could be the heads are bad, it could be any of these chips on the bottom are bad. Um, like this camera is going bad, it won't focus on anything. So I'm going to take a closer look at this. I don't expect to be able to see anything. Um, and of course, you know, I'll probably never find any service information on this anyway. 
you know, um, I mean, if you had the surface information, theoretically what you could do is, you know, put a scope on the head and make sure that the signal coming off of those is right and scope the amplifiers and everything, but uh, for one thing, I'm down to be able to find any information on what to expect for those values, and secondly, I don't think I'm too interested in doing that, but anyway, um, this is definitely a good start for this video. Now, I'm sorry I kind of skipped some steps of the troubleshooting, but Again, it was just me, you know, trying this disc and trying that disc and switching the drive over, so it wasn't anything particularly interesting. Um, anyway, let me mount that drive back in the plastic carrier and put the hard drive on and just see if anything happens there. Okay, colors. The Macintosh 2 line was the first uh, Macintosh line that supported the color. This is not the first Macintosh 2 that was. This is the Macintosh 2 C. I think this is the third one. Um, the Macintosh 2 came out in 87, and I think they had 2X, which had the um, 68030 processor. And then this is the third one. The, it's also has the 68030 processor, but it's a much smaller case. The 2 and the 2X were wider cases than this. And actually, this is nice so you can mount it on the side. I'm not sure if you can see, but it has feet over here so you can stand it up. Anyway, so we can go to down. It actually turns itself off, that's cool. Wasn't sure if it would have um, software control of the uh, power supply or not, but it does. Um, a weird thing actually, the power button on the keyboard will turn it on, but not turn it off. So, and even if it's not booted, like when we were trying out before, when I was unable to boot, pushing this button wouldn't turn it off. You actually had to push the button on the back of the machine. So, but that was kind of interesting. But anyway, um, hopefully we'll have some interesting updates in a second. So I changed my mind. I ended up playing with that uh, other floppy drive first, and it seems like the problem is actually pretty simple. I just don't know how I'm going to fix it. Um, you can see it's booted now. This is the drive that had the issue, and that's not supposed to happen. This head is supposed to be spring held against the disc, otherwise, I mean, it's floating above the disc, it can't be anything that way. But if I just put my finger here, it actually booted up just fine, as you can see right there. So, pretty simple problem. Um, I'm not sure if that happened when I was cleaning the heads or if that was an existing problem. It probably happened when I was cleaning the heads. I just must not have noticed that um, that was bending. Like, I think the only thing that holds it is this little piece of metal here, just providing like a little bit of uh, spring force, but it's supposed to be providing it down, but I was providing it up. So it could have happened when I cleaned the heads. This camera is very, very broken. I should just focus. Um, anyway, they could have happened when I was cleaning the heads. The issue is I'm not sure how I'm going to fix it um, because I mean, what you should do is just, you know, take these screws out, take this off, and bend it back down a little bit. But I think that this is the head alignment. Uh, if you notice, they've got really special screws in there. So the, usually when you see a special screw like that, that's something the manufacturer didn't want you to take out, generally speaking. Um, sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for bad reasons. But in this case, it's probably a good reason, because if you take this out, um, then you may not get the head back in alignment with the tracks on the discs. So um, I... Probably not going to take these out. I think if I did, that would guarantee ruin the drive because I, w I have no way of aligning the head with the tracks on the discs. Um, so I'm going to have to see if I can come up with something to just give this a little bit of down pressure here. Um, but I think that if I can fix that, uh, this fog drive will be good. Um, it looks that way. It's a good boot, so I'll see if I can come up with something for that. So I've got the heads out, head assembly out here, and it turns out there's actually a spring. I'm not sure if you can see it, because it's too dark. But see that spring went there? That's what actually provides the head tension. So that's what must have got stretched. So what I did was I um, pulled it up a little bit so that it hooked on lower down in the swing to give that more tension. You can see now the heads are pulled pretty much together. They're touching there. Um, so be very careful because you don't want to like smash them together. Um, now if I turn it upside down, 
you can just see like a little bit of gap opening. When I turn them right side up, the gap closes. So hopefully that'll be enough um, tension for them to work. I'm gonna put it back on and see what we get. Okay, let's see what happens now. Got the disc in. So doesn't like it. I have to make another adjustment on that, I guess. Okay, let's try it again. Just uh, let's plug it in. Takes a minute too. Plugging in takes a minute for the um, standby power to come up, so you can't hit the button right away. It's just a couple, like half a second or so. But anyway, I uh, tightened that spring up some more, so hopefully it's. Uh, putting enough pressure on the head now. It's not a lot of pressure, just like a little tiny bit. Um, it just has to get it go to contact with the flock disc because the two heads are on either side of the disc and they push the disc against the heads. It has to make, be making good contact in order to read. Hey, look, that looks better. Happy man. Okay, so far so good. Let's see it. It's reading all the tracks. Started back at the beginning with the boot track. When we take this out, all you have to do is there's one screw. If I can show there's a, a rod here that this slides back and forth on. See so that silver rod with the grease on it? You can see I added some grease to it. Right there, there's one screw there, and then one screw in there. You take those out and that rod comes out, and then you can kind of lift this up. And you have to take this plastic piece off here that just has a little hook here, you lift that up, and then this slides off. And that's what um, lifts the head up when you take the disc out. That's attached to this top plate that goes up um, when, the, when there's no disc in there. And that lifts the head up so the disc can come out. So they take that off and take those two screws, take that rod out, and there's two plugs, one here and then one kind of underneath there. Um, for the head connectors, unplug those, take out that those two screws, that rod, take this off, and then you can kind of lift it sideways out of there when the whole assembly comes out. So it's really not easy, or not hard, I mean, to take apart. You can see we are booted now. Our color, remember what our color setting is. So this is definitely looking much better. This clip's in here, let's try and open an application. Keyboard's kind of weird. You have to hit the keys directly on the center, otherwise they jam up and won't go down. It is an actual Apple keyboard. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to put the cover back on this now, put it back in the plastic carrier, and then hook up the hard drive and see what we get out of that, which I don't have much room for. Oh, teach task. 1988. I think it's system 6.0.8. Running these systems off floppy drives is an absolutely miserable experience. Hopefully we can get some use out of the hard drive, but I'm not too hopeful that I'll have to see if I can find a replacement hard drive. Okay, then this is system 6.0.8. Uh, we have, it's like 8 megs of RAM. Yeah, 192K. Um, I was wondering how much memory this had because it looks like um, it was upgraded at some point. 
I'm not sure what the standard is on these things. I think you can have up to 128, I think. Not sure. Um, 25 megabytes, I think, but you have to do some kind of, um, you have to use a special uh, loader or something because apparently the ROMs in here are not 32-bit uh, clean, so you can't actually address that one's RAM out of the box, so you have to have a, something to, a special program to allow you to do that, which, anyway, not really important. Probably 8, eight meg will probably be fine. Uh, okay, so we can go to shutdown. I mean by 32-bit clean um, is on the original Macintosh, use the original uh, Motorola 68K processor, and that one only used 24 bits for the addresses. So it was kind of a 32-bit architecture, but it only had 24-bit addresses. So um, what the original programmers of Macintosh system software did is they used the high 8 bits because you know you were dealing with 32-bit words, but only 24 bits of that are actually used for addresses. Um, the high 8 bits they used for flags for like whether the um, protected memory and different stuff like that, uh, different memory flags. So the problem is when they move on to later processors, like this is the 68030, um, this allows the full 32 bits to be used for addressing, but the legacy software in the ROM um, is still using those high bits for flags, so you can't actually use the full 32 bits for addressing um, as long as the legacy software is running. So there's some kind of special loader or something that you can get that enables you to use the full 32 bits for addressing and then you can add more RAM because then you can actually address it. But anyway, I'm not intending to look into that. I don't think it's really necessary for what this machine would be useful, which is basically just me playing around, maybe trying some programming stuff. Um, so uh, I think we'll be okay now. Um, I have no way to test this Ethernet card. Um, it has the old style um, I think it has a 15 pin connector and also the old um, 10 base 2 coax connector on the back of it. Um, but I have no way to actually test that. I have no computers that I can set up a network for that. But anyway, um, this looks good so far. Uh, so let's put it back together. So, reassembly of this is pretty simple. This is that plastic carrier, you turn it upside down. And then there's two little cutouts there that the screws here on the front fit in. So we just gotta make sure I get this in frame. Just drop this down in here. And then see there's how that's gonna line up like that. You just push it back and it snaps right in. And then this little plastic catch here prevents it from coming back out. So if you're gonna take it out, you just push this down and then it pulls right out. Like this one I had it sitting on this, so it wasn't sitting directly on top of the capacitors that I had installed. A uh, little plastic thing here that I was resting on is also resting on the RAM. Um, doesn't seem to have damaged anything though. So I'll just set this in, and then this just, once it's in, in the right place, just slides forward and latches in there. You can plug the button drive in here. Difficult to get the cable lined up. It's, it's just a short distance, so it's kind of get your finger in. That goes in, and then there's one screw, which I always misplace here. It is. Let's see. So the cable just plugs in right there. So it's kind of hard to get the cable bunched up to get the connector aligned, but it's not too bad. And then this screw goes in right here. And screw that in. latch on the side here and the screw on the other side. Let's get our hard drive ready. Um, I can just plug it in right this way. So there's a four pin Molex here and then the SCSI cable.
doesn't spin one way, so I don't have to worry about that. Got the steady connector. That's in, and then the hard drive just sits in the top. Actually, this, is, this goes in, so this just um, plugs in the front here. I think it is key to go off it in. Alright, so that goes in like that, and the hard drive just snaps in. And then I take it out, you just squeeze these things and it lifts right back out again. And we'll leave that snapped in. And the power supply just goes back in and out of. Snaps in. Plug it in. And we'll get our disc ready. So I've got a few minutes for, not a few minutes, a few seconds for the standby to come up. Should be up now. It is. We'll turn it on. The hard drive is spinning up. We'll pop our disk in. Should boot from that now. And the screen is kind of weird, but. Right, we are booting from the disk. Floppy disk that is. Let's give that a few minutes. And this is the drive for from the um, Macintosh LC. I can put that back in there. That's good. So now I can use the LC to write disks for this. Um, since apparently for some reason the Power Mac when it write bootable disks, find that very strange. Um, anyway, you can see the hard drive did not show up, so not too hopeful of that. We'll see if it can be detected by the disk utilities. Try this one, see if it detects any hard disks. Searching for SCSI drives, drive selection fail. Unable to locate a single drive. Yeah. So, not entirely surprised by that. That's my one. See if can just try one more time. Yeah. Try the disk first aid. It's just classic in that one. I know this is not ideal, but my workbench is kind of not ideal for computer videos. Let's try disk first aid to see if that finds anything. So our internal floppy drive. No. Yeah, so he's not even finding this drive at all, so he must be pretty cooked. Try and solve it just for fun, but I'm sure that would be able to find anything we do. Okay, the Apple installer. Using that to grease those rails in the floppy drive a little bit. Yeah, see, I didn't find anything here. 
So it looks like we are going to be looking for a new SCSI hard drive. Yes, I hope that's the problem and I hope the SCSI controller isn't fried or something. Um, but more, more than likely it's just the drive is bad. I'm not entirely surprised this is, I'm not sure if there's a date put on it, but probably late 80s, early 90s. Um, I'm actually very surprised that the drive in the LC um, is able to boot. Um, doesn't sound very good though, it sounds like the bearing is so I'll take it out any moment, but it did boot. Um, but yeah, so I think that's going to be about it for this. Um, I'm actually very satisfied with what I've gotten so far. Um, and the survive is basically wouldn't even turn on, and now I've gotten to the point where we can boot from the internal floppy drive. We've got video, we've got sound, um, power supply is working fine, floppy drive seems to be working fine. So I think. Um, just need to do a hard disk and hopefully this will be a fully functioning computer then. There is one more experiment I wanted to try um, before we end this video and that is if I write one of these taped over disks um, on the LC uh, and not on the Power Mac uh, and not on the Power Book, um, will I actually boot up these because it should at least boot up these. You know, they're not going to be 100% reliable, but they should be at least, you know, somewhat functional. Um, so I'm going to fire up the LC and write an 800K image on one of these, and then we'll see if this boots from that. But for now, we can push this and go to shut down. And it actually turns itself off. So let me write one of those disks and be right back. Okay, so let's get the LC fired up here. And a very different chime than the two CFs. It's actually kind of interesting, that little adapter that I have uh, requires different settings for the, um, 2C, the LC and the 2CX. Um, I bunked them here on my little truck. Uh, I'm probably just going to end up buying a... Uh, focus is broken again. What's wrong with this thing? Um, I'm probably going to end up buying a secondary adapter uh, just so that I don't have to keep switching it and switching the settings where you see the 2CX once NTSC mode and the LC once VGA SVGA mode. Um, yeah. Now this monitor I think only supports 60 hertz, so there is an option for a 66 hertz mode, but I don't think that will work on this particular monitor. I should just get a uh, correct monitor, but that will probably have to happen someday. So this is the way I received it with this Mickey Mouse background. I'm going to change this to color though, why didn't you save that? I love that graphic speed. Totally, they were actually okay with Windows having to take half a minute to redraw themselves. So I would never fly today. Uh, interesting perspective. Anyway, so what we want to do is this just should have the image to transfer on it. I don't come from a school because it has MS Kids on it, the writing center. This is probably most of you know this, but oh, by the way, watch how long it takes to read and then watch how long it takes to write. 
So we say reading and then switches to waiting for like half a second. That's the difference between the floppy drive and the hard drive speed. So it reads some blocks off the disk and then the writing is the same time it takes to write those same blocks to the hard disk. So you can see how the hard drive is m many, many orders of magnitude faster than the floppy drive. It probably takes 10 times or more as long of a time to read the blocks from the hard drive or from the floppy drive than it takes to write them to the hard drive. But um, Anyway, so let's copy it over. So we want to eject this. Here's my windows, so we'll be drawing itself away. Uh, so anyway, I think most of you know this, but Macintosh was actually one of the early pioneers of um, drag and drop. I think it even worked on the original Macintosh. Of course, maybe Xerox Park had it first, who knows. Uh, Steve Jobs openly admitted that he stole the idea for the GUI from the Xerox Park, so. A lot of people say Apple soon, but in that case, Steve Jobs actually said that he saw the idea from it. Okay, so open the 800k disk. Open. Oh, that's the disk, so we'll pop in our tape dock disk. To erase. I'm not sure if you can hear, but this is going to be the same thing with the text speed up as it writes. So they managed to get 800k on a uh, 720k disk because the outer tracks actually have more sectors than the inner tracks, so the disk spins slower on the outer tracks than the inner tracks. Macintoshes were not exactly set up for multitasking at this time. And so things have succeeded. It says Bella. So we'll shut this down. Wait for my windows to undraw themselves. And then we can shut this down and see if that will boot in the other machine. So this one doesn't have the soft power, but it has an actual physical switch on the back, so you have to actually turn it off. How did it didn't actually sound that bad this time? Usually it makes the uh, whining sound. It sounds like the bird is about to fly across the room. And you notice, okay, so let me get the, uh, everything transferred over. Stupid focus is broken again. All right, move the LC2 back out of the way. See, this is one of our taped up discs. You can see the tape there. We'll see if it boots off that. So we started to. Yeah. So we started to boot off of there, but um, like I said, that's not a hardware problem. That's just like the drive is and the disc are the same, just the ferro ferromagnetic material on the 720K disc is different. So when we wrote this disk in the LC2, they used a much weaker magnetic field um, than it would have on a high density disk, which is why it can read some of the sectors and some of them it can't. So some of them, like it, the writes may be unreliable. So as you can see, it read enough sectors to get to the happy Mac face, but then you know the next sector it looked for must have been bad. Um, so I have gotten these like to work to the point where you can boot the taped off method just that in this case it didn't work. Now if I went back to the LC2 
and wrote the same disk, you know, maybe over and over again, three times or four times or something, maybe that would work. Um, I don't really think it's worth uh, worth it to do that, but I have had these work to a certain extent. See, this one worked to a partial extent. Um, you know, it's just luck of the draw, which sectors will take and which ones won't. Uh, if you can get enough sectors to take in the beginning, you know, it's the boot tracks that it'll boot, um, you can boot off of them, but in this case it looks like whatever sectors didn't take was written in another boot process, so it didn't work here. But um, theoretically this can work, and like I said, I have gotten this to work before on other machines, but anyway, um, so got a little bit of cleaning to do here, someone's colored on the top of it, and you've also got to get a new hard drive, but for now, I am definitely satisfied. Let's move it up one more time. But I'm good disk. And there we go. So, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm definitely satisfied with what we've gotten so far. Um, I just need, like I said, I just need to get a new hard disk and then this machine should be 100% functional. So, hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. It's a miracle. I turned it off, turned it back on again, and now it's booting from the hard drive. Or at least trying to. And might have got stuck. Nope, nope. Another extension popped up. So I have no idea what's going on here. What the hell is this? It's very strange that this would work because um, I tried booting up from this before. You know, a couple times, and also, um, when I booted from the floppy drive, it wouldn't recognize the hard drive at all. So I have no idea what's going on. I really wanted to scan just see if it finds anything. But you can see, you yeah, you can see the the hard drive right there blinking. I guess the hard drive way and then they decided to work. Um, I might try shutting it down and booting it back up again and then seeing if the disk utils on the floppy drive can find the hard drive. It's very interesting. I don't know how long this is going to take. Making some progress though. This isn't that exciting, but I have no idea what this is going to actually work or not, so that's why I'm leaving the camera on.
They said, succeed in case we get a sad Mac face. I'm actually very surprised if this man just to fully boot. I'm surprised that it even got this far. Oh, it's a virus thing. I thought it was a hard drive AO thing. Stuck? No, the hard drive light's still working. Went off from it there. I thought it might have been stuck. like we're in. Let's see what version this is. 7.1.1. Have to change it to color. I hate black and white. This one redraws a little bit faster than the LC. Um, the LC is a 60020. This is a 6.0.3, but I'm not sure the clock frequencies, but this one definitely feels faster. Of course, it's a different graphics card, too. So this one just has a faster graphics card. It does feel a little bit faster. Okay. Let's see what's on. Hard drive. A lot of stuff. Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Type Manager, Kft Profit Brusher, that's a wood document on natural programming. Illustrator is here. Macintosh 2CX Tor. Tor folder. Should we take a tour? Oh, is there a document? So it's an application. And let's not take a tour. Microsoft Word, Chili's, Wales and Quote Express. What is that? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Central Illinois Public Service Company. It feels like government computer or something. It looks that way based on the license there. You know, that or someone that worked there just stole a copy for themselves. Never heard of this program before. It looks almost like a paint. It was like someone's parody Ouija board or something. In the school, I guess. <laughs> okay then. It's uh, interesting. 
with some kind of paint application. All right, let's see what else is on here. Just play around here a little bit, see what's here, and then I want to um, boot from the floppy again and see if it can recognize the hard drive. Oh guys, seems to be working now, at least for the moment. Some 7 Pro readme, system folder, teach text of course, what's in utilities? Anything interesting? Apple File Exchanger, Disk First Aid, and uh, Utilities folder. Out of frame utilities. This first aid, this setup. Seven fonts. So it doesn't look like there's that much to play around with here. May not work with the system seven. After dark. I assume, assume that's what that says anyway. No. May not work with the system. This is all it says. We've got that may not work. We've got After Dark, Easy Access, Etherport. Here's a pie for that Ethernet card. I'm not sure what that is. System extension. So we've got Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, I wonder what version this is. Four. What did I say? 1990. 1990, version 4. Oh, there's a little bit here. We've got a separator. Draw, but I don't actually see Illustrator. Oh, there, there'll be Illustrators up here. All these files are like the latest this was used was 1994. Turn colors coated in paper. It's like a whole lot of nothing. Alright then. I'm not sure what that's about. Try opening something else. Let's try it to add, see what Ed is. What happened to the Habonica fonts? Seems exciting. Just a circle. I don't know how to use these if none of the fonts are here. Let's see what this one is. I'm not sure what happened to the fonts. Circle, I guess. Okay then. Was it equally exciting? What is in the clip art? Document. I wonder if I can actually open these then? No. I think document is just there, you know, oh, it's all my map outline. Let's see if this works.
And in our Central Illinois Public Service Company. Oh, that's Illinois. And that's it, just an outline of Illinois. I'm going really to call it a map. There's nothing on it, just an outline. Anyway. Okay, so let's try restarting this and see if our disk utility on the floppy drive now can find the hard disk. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why I decided to randomly start working. Oh, we have an artist of persuasion, too. Looks like I was persuasion but I'm actually working. Oh, maybe it just shows the slash me. Okay, let's try open. Yeah, so I auto persuade, why not? Oh, that was just a folder. Um uh, interesting in here. City Bank of course, why not? Did it five. Back to slide one. We did it one. Not quite sure what B's are for, unless the state of Illinois was suing a city bank or something. Doesn't really say, it looks like just a diagram. Page two. For a organization. Okay. Not particularly exciting. I've already seen slide five. Okay, let's try opening anything else interesting here. slide. Oh, I actually opened both of them. I thought I would have, oh, you only have one open at a time. I'm kind of surprised that you have more than one. Interesting. Anything else interesting can you look at? When did the recipe work chart? I don't know yet. Let's see if that's interesting. Probably not. Kisps go? Never heard of it. And there's something in Illinois. Only one slide. 
layer three, layer one, no idea. Okay. Let's gather here. Did I make any changes? Try restart. Floppy disk and see if our disk tools work. To recognize the hard disk now. As you know, the little Macintosh thing there is in color. Here, this will find anything now. There we go, volume is Macintosh HD. So now I found it. Interesting. It's very interesting. So I guess what I'll do is we'll try powering this down and powering it up, you know, maybe a couple times in the sea. You know, if the hard drive recognized every time now, or you know whether you have to play with it for a while to get the hard drive to be recognized. That's interesting. So now it finds it finally is Macintosh HD. Huh. And this has update partition and test. Let's do a test. This is a seven minutes and it cannot be interrupted. And, uh, sure. Let's do a test. Alright, so this one I'll turn the camera off for. Alright, so that didn't take that long. It says testing was successful. So, it's very interesting. Um, what? See, this is up on the desktop. I didn't take notice to it there, but I just probably wasn't paying attention. Yeah, it shows up on the desktop now, too. Huh. I can view it. All right, this is very interesting. Okay, so looks like everything's working now. Um, so what do we have to do with this machine? Uh, like we placed capacitors in on the motherboard. There's a little leaky um, service on electrolytics. We placed those to get it to um, reliably power on, and then uh, place all of them to get it to chime. I uh, started with the few in this area and the power up, or power up circuit, I guess you'd call it. Um, the power latch circuit so that when you push the button on the back, it latches the power on, commands the power supply to turn on. And after I place those, then we could get it to reliably power on. And then after I place the two or three other ones over on this side of the motherboard, um, that's when we got it to chime. Um, we got some magic smoke out of the power supply. Uh, but that was rectified by replacing these reef uh, capacitors. So that's the one that blew up and poured a bunch of smoke out. Uh, we no damage due to that, just um, you know, cosmetic, you know, you know, more smoke coming out of things. Um, and they're just like line filtering. So theoretically, you could work without those if you don't have a noisy power line. But it's a good idea to have them. So place those. Um, and for the floppy drive. Uh, that wasn't working. Uh, I think that might have been my fault. You know, we lift the head up a little bit to clean the heads. You know, I didn't like bend it all the way back or anything, so I'm kind of surprised that just lifting up that little bit stretched out that spring. But looks like we've got that fixed. Uh, video card wasn't working. Um, we just replaced that. This is the old one here. Um, I have no idea why this one doesn't work. Um, could it theoretically be a shorted tantalum capacitor? I could go through and check these and see if any of them are shorted, but usually when they're short they blow up, and none of them seem to have blown up. Um, again, just as a due diligence type deal, I could go in and check those and just see if any of them are shorted, but um, that video card that I got seems to work just fine, so I think we'll be okay with that. And then the hard drive, Magical mystery hard drive. 
doesn't work and then randomly starts working. So I think for now what I'm going to do is play with this a little bit more and keep an eye on that hard drive. Anyway, um, play with this some more, keep an eye on the hard drive and see, you know, whether it only works half the time or whether, you know, it was just messed up and now it's going to work continuously, I have no idea. Um, it actually doesn't sound too bad. The hard drive in here actually sounds better than the one in the um, LC. As far as bearing noise, you know, it's pretty quiet. No high-pitched whining or shrieking or anything coming out of it. So, anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Seems like everything now works. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.